Okay, now we come to the next sutta. 63. Chula Malunkya Sutta. The shorter discourse to Malunkya Putta. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, Anatta Pindika's Spa. Then, while the Venerable Malunkya Putta was alone in meditation, the following thought arose in his mind. These speculative views have been undeclared by the Blessed One, set aside and rejected by him. Namely, the world is eternal, and the world is not eternal. The world is finite, the world is infinite. The soul is the same as the body, and the soul is one thing and the body another. After death, the Tathagata exists. After death, the Tathagata does not exist. After death, the Tathagata both exists and does not exist. And after death, the Tathagata neither exists nor does not exist. The Blessed One does not declare these to me, and I do not approve of and accept the fact that He does not declare these to me. So I shall go to the Blessed One and ask Him the meaning of this. If He declares to me either the world is eternal, or the world is not eternal, etc., then I will lead the holy life under Him. If He does not declare these to me, then I will abandon the training and return to the low life. Stop here for a moment. So this... Uh, Remember Malunkya Putta, uh, instead of putting his mind on his meditation object, uh, his mind is starting to stray uh, and thinking why the Buddha did not explain all these views to him uh, that uh, external sect teachers uh, uh, accept. Uh, uh, so the Buddha never mentioned any one of these. Uh, so he's starting to doubt uh, the Buddha. Uh, and he says if the Buddha does not explain all these to him, he will disrobe and go back to the lay life. Then when it was evening, the Venerable Malunkya Putta rose from meditation and went to the Blessed One. After paying homage to him, he sat down at one side and told him, Here, Venerable Sir, while I was alone in meditation, the following thought arose in my mind. These speculative views have been undeclared by the Blessed One. If he does not declare these to me, then I will abandon the training and return to the lower life. If the Blessed One knows the world is eternal, let the Blessed One declare to me the world is eternal. If the Blessed One knows the world is not eternal, let the Blessed One declare to me the world is not eternal. If the Blessed One does not know either the world is eternal or the world is not eternal, then it is straightforward for one who does not know and does not see to say, I do not know, I do not see. If the Blessed One knows the world is finite, the world is infinite, the soul is the same as the body, etc. Let the Blessed One declare to me. If the Blessed One knows, let the Blessed One declare that to me. If the Blessed One does not know, then it is straightforward for one who does not know and does not see to say, I do not know, I do not see. I stop here for a moment. So you see this arrogant disciple is come to challenge the Buddha whether the Buddha knows or not. I have to declare to him otherwise he doesn't want to continue to be a disciple of the Buddha. Then the Buddha said, How then, Malunkya Buddha, did I ever say to you, Come, Malunkya Buddha, lead the holy life under me and I will declare to you the world is eternal or the world is not eternal, etc. No, Venerable well, Sir. Then did you ever tell me, I will lead the holy life under the Blessed One, and the Blessed One will declare to me, the world is eternal, or the world is not eternal, etc. No, Venerable well, Sir. That being so, misguided man, who are you and what are you abandoning? I stop here for a moment. So the Buddha is telling him, when you came to uh, be my disciple, did I ever tell you uh, that... I will declare all these things to you. Did I make this bargain? He said, no. And then when you came to be my disciple, did you say eh, that I must declare all these things to you when you become my disciple? And he says, no. And the Buddha said, oh, foolish man, uh, we did not uh, uh, set up these terms. So what, who are you to say all these things? And the Buddha continued, if anyone should say thus, I will not lead the holy life under the blessed one, until the Blessed One declares to me the world is eternal or the world is not eternal, etc. That would still remain undeclared by the Tathagata, and meanwhile that person would die. Suppose Malunkya Putta, 
a man was wounded by an arrow, thickly smeared with poison, and his friends and companions, his kinsmen and relatives, brought the surgeon to treat him. The man would say, I will not let the surgeon pull out this arrow until I know whether the man who wounded me was a noble or a Brahmin or a merchant or a worker. And he would say, I will not let the surgeon pull out this arrow until I know the name and clan of the man who wounded me or until I know whether the man who wounded me was tall or short or, or of middle height or until I know whether the man who wounded me was dark or brown or golden skin or until I know whether the man who wounded me lives in such a village or town or city or until I know whether the bow was, that wounded me was a long bow or a cross bow or until I know whether the bowstring that wounded me was fiber or reed or sinew or hemp or bark or until I know whether the shaft that wounded me was wild or cultivated or until I know with what kind of feathers the shaft that wounded me was fitted whether those of a vulture or a crow or a hawk or a peacock or a stock or until I know with what kind of sinew the shaft that wounded me was bound whether that of an ox or a buffalo or a lion or a monkey or until I know what kind of arrow it was that wounded me, whether it was hoof-tipped or curved or barbed or calf tooth or oleander. All this would still not be known to that man, and meanwhile he would die. So too, Malukya Buddha, if anyone should say thus, I will not lead the holy life under the Blessed One, until the Blessed One declares to me, the world is eternal or the world is not eternal, etc., that would still remain undeclared by the Tathagata, and meanwhile that person would die. Stop here for a moment. This is a very classic uh, simile uh, that the Buddha is teaching here, uh, that if a man uh, was wounded, uh, fatally wounded, uh, with an arrow uh, thickly smeared with poison, and a surgeon wants to pull out the arrow, uh, he says he will not let the surgeon pull out the arrow, uh, until he knows who is the man who wounded him, uh, where he comes from, and what type of arrow, what type of bow, etc. And if he wants to know all these things, uh, he will die uh, before all these things are answered. Uh. So the Buddha says in the same way, uh, if a person uh, renounces uh, and then he wants to know all these unbeneficial uh, questions, uh, then he would die uh, before all these are answered. Uh. Malunkya Putta, if there is the view, the world is eternal, the holy life cannot be lived. And if there is the view, the world is not eternal, the holy life cannot be lived. Whether there is the view, the world is eternal, or the view, the world is not eternal, there is birth, there is aging, there is death, there, is so there are sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair, the destruction of which I prescribe here and now. If there is the view, the world is finite. The world is infinite, the soul is the same as the body, etc. The holy life cannot be lived. Whether there is the view, uh, after death the Tathagata exists or not, uh, there is birth, there is aging, there is death, there are sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair, the destruction of which I prescribe here and now. Therefore, Malunkya Putta, remember what I have, I have left undeclared as undeclared. I remember what I have declared as declared. And what have I left undeclared? The world is eternal, that I have left undeclared. The world is not eternal, I have left undeclared. The world is finite, I have left undeclared. The world is infinite, I have left undeclared. The soul is the same as the body, I have left undeclared, etc., etc. All these uh, I have left undeclared. Why I, have I left that undeclared? Because it is unbeneficial. It does not belong to the fundamentals of the holy life. It does not lead to disenchantment, to dispassion, to cessation, to peace, to direct knowledge, to enlightenment, to Nibbana. That is why I have left it undeclared. And what have I declared? This is suffering I have declared. This is the origin of suffering I have declared. This is the cessation of suffering, I have declared. This is the way leading to the cessation of suffering, I have declared. Why, I have, I, why have I declared that? Because it is beneficial, it belongs to the fundamentals of the holy life. It leads to disenchantment, to dispassion, to cessation, to peace, to direct knowledge, to enlightenment, to nibbana. 
That is why I have declared it. Therefore, Malunkia Buddha, remember what I have left undeclared as undeclared, and remember what I have declared as declared. That is what the Blessed One said. Remember, Malunkia Buddha was satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. That's the end of the Sutta. So you see here, huh, the Buddha has taken a lot of trouble huh, to explain to him huh, why the Buddha does not declare all these views, lah, because it has nothing to do with the holy life. It does not help you uh, to uh, to, uh, uh, to to attain nibbana, to attain enlightenment, uh, and end uh, birth, aging, dying, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. Uh, all that sorrow. Uh, uh. But the Buddha says uh, uh, he declares the four noble truths uh, because it is beneficial, uh, because it belongs to the fundamentals of the holy life. Uh, and leads to disenchantment, to dispassion, to cessation, to peace, direct knowledge, enlightenment, and nibbana. That's why the Buddha declares the four noble truths. So the Buddha said, what he has not taught is not important. What he has taught is important. That's why he only teaches what is important to us. So in this, there's one sutta. One day, uh, the Buddha was talking to his disciples. Uh, he took up a handful of leaves in his hand uh, and he asked his disciples, which is more, uh, the leaves in my hand or the leaves in the forest? And the, the, the disciples said, uh, the leaves in your hand are very few uh, compared to the leaves in the forest. Uh, Bhagavan. So the Buddha said, uh, in the same way, uh, what I know uh, is like the leaves in the forest. What I teach uh, is like the leaves in my hand. Uh, so what the Buddha teaches uh, is just the essentials. Uh, uh, what he knows, uh, a lot of things are not important to us. Uh, uh, if you want to know too many things, uh, we will die uh, before our, before we can know all these things. Uh. So life is too short. Uh, our problem uh, is that uh, life, the cycle of rebirths, uh, births and rebirths, uh, is suffering. Uh. So our problem uh, is to end our suffering, uh, not to find out. Uh, a lot of things uh, about this world. Nowadays, uh, we have this information explosion. Nowadays, a lot of a lot of people like to go into the internet. Uh, I know a lot of things. Uh, waste a lot of time uh, getting a lot of knowledge. Uh, but a lot of that knowledge uh, is not helpful to us. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, when you are about to die, uh, all that information you know uh, is not is not important. Then you will realize uh, it's only the Dhamma that is important in life. Okay, I'll end here, I think. I think to discuss. Put nearer, put nearer your mouth. Is that is that stated there? It's the same thing, la. same thing. Point here is uh, breathe in and out, uh, experiencing the whole body of the breath. La. So different persons uh, will notice differently. La. So you don't have to worry. La. You just uh, know uh, that you try to uh, notice uh, the breath, la, the breath as a body. La. How much of it you notice? Uh, different persons will experience differently. La.
Yes, when when you have a deep breath, uh, you, go, you can feel it right inside. No? And when you have a shallow breath, uh, you only feel it at the around the nostril. No? So when you start meditating, uh, your breath is a bit coarse, a bit uh, not refined yet. Uh, then you can you are taking deep breaths, uh, so you notice deep breaths. No? As you sit longer, the breath becomes finer and finer uh, and more tranquil. Tranquilize, uh, then you only notice the short breaths. Uh. Yeah, that's because of sloth, sloth and topper. Uh. But it doesn't matter, you just know, uh, uh, even though you can't notice the breath properly, uh, as long as you can differentiate whether it's an in breath or an out breath, uh, uh, that's good enough. Uh. And usually you can do that because of the movement of your abdomen and all that, nah? you can tell nah, whether you are breathing in or breathing out. Okay. <laughs> Uh, not not really. You can practice in any order you want. Uh, so uh, there is no fix. Uh, it's not that they are supposed to practice in this order. Uh, in other suttas, uh, the Buddha would explain it different order. Uh, so there's no fixed order. Uh, it's up to you which one you practice. Want to practice more person? That is on the breath, on meta or uh, impermanence or powerless of the body etc except that you notice uh, in the beginning uh, the Buddha says uh, you should meditate until the mind uh, becomes unmoving uh, strong uh, unmoving like earth water fire wind and and uh, space uh, uh, That is the method uh, of meditation on loving kindness uh, in the suttas, and uh, the meditation on loving kindness that is taught by monks nowadays uh, is uh, a bit different. The, in the suttas, we find uh, that the Buddha uh, told his disciples uh, to attain the jhana first, at least the first jhana. Uh, which you do by meditating on the breath or on the kasina. Uh, kasina meaning uh, earth or uh, meditate on fire or meditate on color or whatever uh, until the mind becomes one pointed. Then after, after that only, uh, the Buddha says, uh, then you practice uh, meditation on loving kindness by radiating one quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, all around. Uh, that is the way taught by the Buddha. But nowadays, uh, uh, people teach uh, by chanting, uh, may I be well and happy and all that, uh, which is not uh, the way taught by the Buddha. Uh, but uh, uh, if we, of course, it's difficult uh, to practice the way taught by the Buddha to, take, to get the jhanas first. Uh, but uh, we can still practice it the, the, uh, on a low level uh, by uh, showing uh, loving kindness, uh, as mentioned uh, previously, uh, the Buddha says, when we live with others, uh, we should have uh, uh, harmony and uh, 
And uh, one way to do that uh, is to practice uh, loving kindness uh, uh, outwardly and inwardly uh, through the body, speech, and the mind. Uh. The body means uh, uh, by your body actions, uh, you try to show uh, loving kindness. Uh, uh, and by uh, verbal language, uh, by, uh, by the by the verbal uh, uh, speech, uh, we also uh, use uh, words uh, to 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 show our loving kindness, uh, and also to thoughts, uh, to have thoughts of uh, loving kindness to others. Uh, so uh, it is through these three karmas uh, that we can practice loving kindness, and people can kind of uh, see uh, or feel uh, that you have loving kindness. If you, in the Buddha's teachings, before you can see clearly, for example, this is not I, this is not mine, this is not myself, huh? you have to get rid of the five hindrances. If you don't get rid of the five hindrances, uh, you are uh, you, you don't have that wisdom. You don't you don't see clearly. So it's it's not possible to see clearly uh, with the five hindrances uh, enveloping us. Uh. Mm. Okay, so we end here. Yeah.